Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Fallout 4. My name's Camel, and this video is going to be a walkthrough guide in which I will show you how to acquire the unique Chinese officer's sword, General Chow's Revenge. To acquire this sword, we need to come to the Drumlin Diner, found in the zone Lexington and Northwest Commonwealth. Here on the Pip Boy map, we can see that it is to the southeast of Vault 111, where you start the game. Upon arrival, we will witness a confrontation between Wolfgang, a chems dealer, and Trudy, a humble merchant with a jet addicted son. When we talk to Wolfgang, we want to click Offer Help. Once this is done, click Talk to Trudy. Then we will start the quest Order Up. Now there are three different ways to end this quest, in two of which you will be able to encounter General Chow's Revenge, and one of which you will not. So first of all, I'm going to show you the most optimal way to complete the quest. To get the best results for completing the quest, we must walk into the diner and talk to Trudy. You can either click Threaten Her, or end peacefully. Either option will result in Trudy and Wolfgang settling their differences. Trudy will remain at the diner still as a merchant and Wolfgang will also reside at the diner as a second merchant. It's very important that Trudy survives because she is the merchant that sells General Chow's revenge and we can find it in her weapons tab. The other way to do it is to side with Trudy and kill Wolfgang. This way Trudy survives and you can still buy the weapon. However, if you do it this way, Wolfgang's dead and he will not be a merchant available for use for the rest of the game. The third option for completing the quest is to side with Wolfgang and kill Trudy and her son Patrick. However, if you do this, you will not be able to get the unique Chinese officer sword General Chow's Revenge, as Trudy only sells it and it does not drop off her body when you kill her. As you can see here, it is not in her inventory along with most of her stock. So my suggestion would be to do it the first way I showed you, because then you can still get the sword and you have two merchants. So once that's done and Trudy has has survived, we want to buy the sword off her. Now the price of General Chow's Revenge will vary depending on your character's level of charisma and other various magazine and perk effects. Before we look at the base stats of the weapon, I would just like to point out that I have no perk, bobblehead or magazine effects applied to my character and I have set the special attribute stats of my character to 1, so we will only be seeing the base stats of the weapon, the absolute minimum unaffected stats of General Chow's Revenge. So General Chow's Revenge will always come with the serrated blade mod already applied to it. The serrated blade does have a bleed effect, as we can see the base ballistic damage is 30, it has a medium speed, its weight is 3 and its value is 775. For showcasing, I'm going to fully upgrade General Shao's sword, which only entails adding one mod to the weapon. As we can see down the bottom here, electrified serrated blade. Adds electrical damage, target bleeds and exceptional damage. In terms of perks, to apply this this mod you need blacksmith at rank 3 and science at rank 1. So now that the mods have been applied, General Chow's Revenge. It has a base ballistic damage of 30, a new electrical damage of 15. The serrated blade also adds a bleed effect that is not displayed on screen. And up the top in the middle we can see General Chow's Revenge does 50% more damage against robots. So of course this effect does make it very effective against taking out robots. Even with base stats and no perks applied I had no trouble in almost one-shotting every single robot I came across. And if it wasn't one-shotted, it was killed very quickly in a couple of swift swings. This extra damage against robot makes it a very effective weapon for removing turrets. However, don't let all the talk about robots deceive you. General Chow's Revenge is still very effective against humanoids and living targets. It already comes with a serrated blade which has a hidden bleed effect, which of course applies to living targets. And when upgraded, the extra electrical damage affects both robots and living targets. So it's a very versatile sword. Just like with taking out robots and turrets, I had no problem taking out most enemies within anything from one swing to about five swings for the strongest of enemies. It also has a wide variety of special VATS attacks, like leg crippling decapitations, twirling chest cavity puncturing, and the rush charge stab. So although on the face of it it may seem a bit, yeah, boring, after the electrified serrated blade upgrade it is actually an incredible incredibly versatile weapon, both being super effective against robots, with exceptional damage, electrical damage, and the serrated blade which adds the bleed damage, making it very useful against living targets as well. With its effectiveness against a wide variety of enemies, and its excellent balance of both speed and ballistic damage, General Chow's Revenge is an excellent choice for a melee weapon. So before we get some general revenge, I'd just like to say, ciao. And here's General Chow's Revenge in action. I've been 
watching Camel, I would like to thank you very much for watching. I do hope that this video helped you in some way in regards to acquiring General Chow's revenge. If you would like to see other Fallout 4 guides and walkthroughs, please feel free to click on the playlist button on screen. Of course, this will take you to my Fallout 4 guides and walkthroughs playlist where you can select the videos you want to watch freely. Or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 guides and walkthroughs that I upload. Once again, I would like to thank you very much for watching and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there.